everybody to Game On. We hope you enjoyed the mayoral debate that was on TV just before the start of the show. I won't waste any time in announcing the details to the Greyhounds ticket giveaway now. For the information to earn yourself some free Greyhounds tickets, head on over to SueOnline.com. In the article which is live as of 8.30, it will fill you in on the two-step process to get yourself filled in. Make sure you share the Sue Online Facebook post and not just create your own. That way we can track the shares a little bit easier. Now getting back on track for the start of the show, it will be hard to follow up the heat from the mayoral debate, but we will have to try our best. For the first time on our show, we will debut a brand new segment on this day. Get it? Like Game On? Okay, I'm not a stand-up comedian, but I tried, okay? But on this day, we'll take a look back in history of what happened in sports on that specific day. Matt and I also take a look at the most recent hit in the NHL worthy of debate, Tom Wilson's hit on Oscar Sundquist, which left a massive laceration on Sundquist's face and had him down on the ice. Find out what sort of suspension we think is fitting on this episode of Game On. And now here we are to debut the brand new segment to Game On, on this day, where we take a look back in sports history on what events happened on this day. So for October 2nd, it was quite the busy day. In 1921, New York Yankees outfielder Babe Ruth hits the then record 59th home run in a 7-6 win over his former club, the Boston Red Sox, at Polo Grounds. Sticking with the Yankees in 1947, their catcher Yogi Berra hit the first pinch hit home run in the Baseball World of Series off of Ralph Branca in the seventh inning of a 9-8 loss to the Brooklyn Dodgers in Game 3. In 1950, Bob Shaw of the Chicago Cardinals set the then NFL record with five touchdown receptions in a 55-13 win against the Baltimore Colts. Cardinals quarterback Jim Hardy tossed six touchdown passes in total. Come 1974, future Baseball Hall of Famer right fielder Hank Aaron hit his final home run as a member of the Atlanta Braves in a 13-0 drubbing of the Cincinnati Reds, Aaron's 733rd career home run on his last National League at-bat. In 1992's Disney film The Mighty Ducks, today was the day that the Mighty Ducks defeated their rivals the Hawks to claim the state championship. Although much controversy lingers on the Ducks' playoff appearance, after at first missing the playoffs, they were awarded a spot as a whole team caught the measles and had to forfeit their spot. In 2005, the NFL plays their first regular season game outside the United States when the Arizona Cardinals defeated the San Francisco 49ers 31-14 in Mexico City. And a big happy birthday shout-out goes out to Stanley Cup champion Phil Kessel, who was born October 2, 1987. We hope you enjoy 31 hot dogs for your 31st birthday. Welcome back to Game On, where we've got our panel of NHL disciplinaries here, I, I guess, I don't, for lack of a better term, where we're going to be diving into the Tom Wilson hit. I, first off, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm very biased. I don't like Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson, I think, too much of a goon for my liking. But let's, let's, let's try to put that bias aside. Matt, tell me a little bit about Tom Wilson and who he is, you know, when he came into the league, some teams he's played for. Tell me about Tom before we look a little bit into the darker side of him. Well, all he remembers about Tom Wilson is I've seen him play for three years with the Plymouth Whalers, and he was a very good player, 20 goal score, but all I remember is he always took a lot of penalties in the OHL, especially for hitting. He was always known to hit players, and ever since he joined the Washington Capitals in 2013, he's led the team in penalty minutes every single season. And they've just recently signed him to a sizable contract, six years, just over $5 million. For the type of player Tom Wilson is and for the points he puts up, is that a fair amount to pay him? I think so, because, like, you know, when you look at the other super, superstars, like, you know, Ovechkin, like, he's on a 13-year contract, well, so we I, all know he's not going to get the same contract he is. Okay, but right. I'd say that's a fair deal for the type of player he is. All right, fair enough. Now, I'm sure you've seen the hit, correct, where Tom Wilson... Uh, Oscar Sundquist is cutting across open ice right in the middle. He's not looking. He's got his head down. Two things you shouldn't do while cutting across open ice. I'm sure you've seen Don Cherry tell you, keep your head up, kids, many, many a times. 
Tom Wilson takes full advantage. Some things I'll give him points for. He didn't take strides into him. It wasn't charging. And that's a, I, I guess that's really the only point I can give him because the principal point of contact was his head. We've seen this happen many times with Tom Wilson before. What is it with him and not being able to get it through his own head that you can't target other people's heads? I think that, like, you know, it's discipline because I think he has, like, a disciplinary uh, thing because I think, like, you know, he's a hard player to coach and the more the coach tells him, like, you know, not to hit a player, the less he listens. I think he's just one of those players that are not very coachable. Like, he's a very good player, but if he stops taking those stupid penalties where he hits the players, like, he could really help his team a lot. Like, it's hard to tell a player that just won a cup with his team, like, you know, to change the way how he plays, but, right. no, I think he's not learning. Well, I have them written down here. So this is his suspension history. He was suspended for two preseason games for a hit on Robert Thomas that took place in the preseason. The, another suspension he got in the preseason was Sammy Blah. He hit him, four-game suspension, and Wilson was also suspended for three games in the playoffs for a head check to Zach Aston Reese that also caused him a concussion and a broken jaw. Three suspensions here, all for very, very dirty plays, some of them being headshots themselves. Now that we've seen a three-game, a four-game, and a two-game suspension for him, this guy is a repeat offender. What kind of suspension do we think is going to come from it? Well, I think Tom Wilson, he deserves a 10-game suspension because out of all the hits I've seen so far in preseason, and counting that one you mentioned that happened in the playoffs, this one is the worst. Like, he could have, like, the guy could have been taken off on a stretcher, and he's lucky, like, you know, I don't know how long he's going to be out. I don't know if he's feeling concussion-like symptoms, but no. That was a bad hit, and he deserves 10 games right there. And let's keep the camera on, Matt, right now. If we could actually go back to him, you can see just up behind Matt's head how bloody the guy is from getting an open cut on his face from this hit. The guy doesn't even look like he knows where he is anymore. I think Matt's absolutely correct. I think 10 games is the minimum starting base. Double digits. Don't Now that preseason's wrapped up, hopefully these will only be regular season games. But there's got to be a point where his suspension's long enough and he loses enough money where it clicks for him. You can't do that. And another thing I don't understand about Tom Wilson, why is he doing these hits in preseason, in games that don't matter? He's been hitting players that no, don't necessarily have a name for themselves. And that's, I think, even worse. I mean, I'm not saying target the superstars in the league by any means either. But I would imagine that if you're trying to take a run and hurt somebody, you're going to want to do it to a difference maker in a game. So, Matt, I'm not sure if you know what's going through Tom's head when he's doing it. But why is he taking such risky hits when it comes to preseason games? I actually don't understand why he's even doing that because the thing is like these are meaningless games like sure like you know this is exhibition time this is the time where the coaches and the fans look at their players but the thing is no for Tom Wilson to be doing this in preseason like that's unacceptable like I don't know what's going through his head but all I know is that year in and year out he's been the Capitals top penalty minutes leader ever right. since he's joined the team but the thing is like you got to, like, being tough is one thing in this league, but you got to be smart tough. Because one thing I noticed mm -hmm. about Tom Wilson, for him to be doing this in preseason, and again, like, you know, headshots, those are uncalled for because we can't have human beings getting hit on the ice, like, you know, during sports. Mm -hmm. Because, you, like, they're more than just hockey players. But the thing is, like, you know, Tom Wilson, like, for him to do that hit, that's not smart tough. No. That's, uh... Garbage. And this is the, what, the third time that he's done a, a questionable hit in preseason. I don't understand, especially against guys like Robert Thomas, Sammy Blah, and Oscar Sundquist. Those aren't household names, and I'm sure there's diehard hockey fans watching right now that are going to say, oh, of course we know who those guys are. But for the casual hockey fan, this guy's not taking out difference makers in the game. When it comes to Tom Wilson now, in the league, when they're going to give him the call, you say 10 games, is that what you think he's going to get, or is that what you think is the most likely scenario? I think uh, that's the most likely scenario, because when you look at, like, you know, hits in the past, too, like, th like those kind of hits get 10 games at least, but I mm -hmm. think that if he got taken off on a stretcher, it would have been maybe 15 to 20, but I think right. that right now 10 games is all he's going to get, and I think that's a fair amount for him, and, like, you know, like what he's done in the preseason too, but no, that was the worst hit, and no, 10 games is the call. Absolutely. Anything less than double-digit games, I think, is an absolute joke. If the league gives him less than 10 games suspension, joke. 
in a perfect world for me, I, I say you're going 15 to 20. You have to let him know that he can't go do, run around doing that. And for a guy that's only missed a few preseason games, and sure he's missed a few playoff games, obviously games he's not going to want to miss, those were two, three, four games at a time. That's, that's not sending him a message. Looking back now at those suspensions he received before, are, are they validated? Are they reasonable for what he's done? Like, once again, he's a repeat offender. He's taking out players in, not only in preseason, but in the playoffs. Those two, three, four game suspensions, is that enough from before? And if it isn't, what's the precedent to set now to make sure he doesn't do it again? I think that's enough from before, but I think that, like, you know, if he does get the lengthy suspension, I think he's going to learn a big lesson, hopefully, heading into uh, when the season starts. Because, I mean, like, you know, he almost dodged the bullet with, like, you know, Robert Thomas and Zach Acton Reese. And, uh, like, you know, Robert Thomas, I've seen him play with the Hamilton Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. He actually got the MVP. Uh, of uh, the playoffs when they beat the Greyhounds in the final. And again, off topic, like, you know, I thought Boris Kachuk should have got the MVP of the OHL that year because he actually led, you know, all the, the OHL playoffs in scoring. So I don't know why they gave it to Robert Thomas, maybe because he's a former London Knight. Ooh. But the thing is for, uh, f for uh, uh, Tom Wilson to, right. like, you know, hit uh, Robert Thomas, like, you know, he got away with, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, a bit of a suspension right there. But no, I think that... He deserves a 10-game suspension, and if he doesn't learn from that, then he's going to find himself in more trouble with the league. He's going to get fines, and he's going to end up missing a lot of the season. It's something almost like a Rafi Torres suspension where he missed half the season, right? Now, looking forward to the Washington Capitals season, without Tom Wilson, how big of a piece of their team are they missing? Oh, uh, they're missing their goon. So, I, I mean, like, you know, he's a guy that actually helped out Ovechkin. Like, you know, every team needs a goon. Every team needs a police officer on their team. So, I think without Tom Wilson, like, maybe Ovechkin's going to be in trouble now because maybe, like, you know, players are going to try to injure him because, you know, that's what Tom Wilson was for. Like, mm -hmm. he was in charge of, like, you know, protecting Ovechkin and uh, the other players well, on his team. I do think Ovechkin can kind of hold his own. He's a bigger guy. But you also said every team needs a goon. Is that true? Does every team need a goon? The way stats have shown hockey's growing is if you can't put the puck in the back of the net, you really don't have a place on a team. But do you need that goon to protect your star players still in 2018? I'd say for some teams, yes, because okay. look at Brad Marchand and the Boston Bruins. I mean, like, Vancouver, when they beat Vancouver uh, in the Stanley Cup Finals back in 2011, like, sure, like, Vancouver was the number one team in the NHL that year, but the reason why Boston won is because they were a bigger team, they were more physical, and Brad Marchand... He knew how to get underneath, mm -hmm. under the player's skin. And then I remember some fans in uh, Vancouver were saying, Boston plays really dirty hockey. And then Brad Marchand goes, yeah, but we won the cup because of it. So I think, like, you know, every team does need a goon. And if they're smart tough, they're going to go far. Smart tough is something very important in this day and age. You can't get caught running around. But going back to Tom Wilson now, when a suspension gets levied, and we know exactly the details of it, You'll have to come back to Game On to get the fill-in on what exactly it was and how long it was. But stay tuned, more Game On after this. Well, that's it. We are all done another episode of Game On. We thank you for your viewership over the previous half hour and hope you enjoyed. As always, you can catch Game On at 8.30 every Tuesday to Friday, and full episodes are available online at Sue Online's YouTube channel. Don't forget to get yourself entered into the ticket giveaway for the October 14th Greyhound game by checking out the article on SueOnline.com. Have a good night, everybody. Well, thanks again for tuning in to another video of Game On here on our YouTube channel. I is this, is this just your show? No, is this I, just your what show? Did I say I, that? I'm in the show I, too, I, Alex. Guys, we're rolling. Oh boy, do I ever love working with Matt Stefano on Game On. Thanks for tuning in. Matt, do you have anything to say? Alex, you're number one. I enjoy working with you too. We're the best. If I'm number one, you're number one. What do you mean? You're number one. You're number one. No, you. No, you're number okay, one. Fine. Come on, we're both number ones. Okay, I'll take it. You're number one team. <laughs>